good evening everyone i uh, hope i am uh, audible clearly can anyone of you respond whether i am audible enough am i audible uh, students yes great okay uh, welcome you to the uh, seminar conducted by uh, uh, achievers as well as uh, uh, the question bank so uh, this is the second consecutive time that we are doing this seminar uh, as per the request made by the students this time also uh, we are organizing this seminar uh, so Uh, I am Chaturanga Samarwan, a senior lecturer attached to the Department of Accounting, University of Sri Jayawardenepura, as well as the, uh, I uh, am a ACCA member as well as a, a chartered accountant. Uh, so today I am here to uh, give you some support, kind of a support for the examination uh, that will be uh, conducted in a uh, uh, few days ahead. So, uh, my dear students, uh, take this opportunity opportunity to ask any question that you have, and get the issues clarified uh, with me. So, I will be uh, spending about uh, three to four hours with you. So, during this time, uh, you can ask questions, uh, whatever things, and then uh, try to get the maximum out of this seminar. Great. So. today i am uh, focusing on a target paper uh, so i have sent the paper as well as i have shared the paper with you uh, if you have any inability or difficulty in seeing the paper i will show the paper on the board on the screen and by looking at the questions we can uh, discuss the answer uh, so uh, during this session uh, while i am doing the target paper i will be giving uh, you some uh, exam hints uh, and how to manage your time as well as uh, how to do the uh, works during this uh, limited time period because you have come to the uh, 11th hour uh, of the examination because uh, in uh, days to come you will uh, face a very critical examination in your life okay so let's get into the paper and as i said you earlier uh, while i'm doing the paper i will be giving some the exam hints and time management techniques and uh, some other important uh, uh, points so i have shared with the uh, paper it has two components actually and remember i will be touching on or focusing on the accounting part only i don't do the business studies part because that is kind of a uh, the uh, the theoretical aspect where uh, you can study all these things but uh, you will be struggling on the accounting part uh, particularly when it comes to the time management so you need to complete the paper within 3 hours and 10 minutes so in that case if you can complete the accounting part as quickly as possible then you can complete the whole paper uh, within the uh, specified time well so the first question uh, you can see i have taken the question number as 17 because if you look at the uh, uh, previous papers from 1 to 16 questions are targeted on the business studies part from the question 17 onwards uh, you will be having the accounting part so similar to the paper structure i have said this target paper so the first question in the accounting part uh, starts uh, the question number 17 okay and you will see a pattern of questions so if you get uh, familiarized with this pattern so it will be very easy paper right so you have to get ready for the examination before the examination you have to do the rehearsals before the examination don't do the rehearsals at the final examination okay so this is kind of a rehearsal maybe the final rehearsal uh, 
right? So get uh, the maximum out of this seminar. And at last you can come in whether this is valuable or not. And based on your, uh, uh, your learning, you can share your feedback as well. So that will be uh, important to uh, conduct a seminar like this in future. Got it? Right. So the first question in my part, what are the accounts listed below are used to record transactions based on the double end principle of increased debit and decreased credit? So it's all about the double end principles. So let me uh, summarize the double end principles. You can take a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil and write down the summary, which will be very important to answer the question because you will see a similar pattern, same pattern in every paper. Right, so take a piece of paper and I will give you some uh, 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 summary points. You know that there are three uh, basic elements in the accounting equation. Those elements are, write down, we have, uh, we have asset equals equity plus liabilities. Write down assets equal equity plus liabilities. So this is a basic equation. Got it? Write down. Assets equal equity plus liabilities. Now, in this basic equation, tell me where do we adjust the income and expenses? Quickly, I want an answer. Where do we adjust the income and expenses in this basic equation? Equity, excellent. Equity, very good. Equity, Tanushi and Mithulan. Yes, equity, exactly. So let me expand this equation. At last, you can see the beauty of this, right? So asset will be same as earlier. Equity, I will write like equity, and you know that income is added to the equity, isn't it? Income is added to the equity, and the expenses are deducted or subtracted from the equity. So minus expenses, minus expenses, and you take the liabilities as earlier plus liabilities, liabilities. Understood? So income are added to the equity and expenses are deducted or subtracted from the equity. Write down this quickly. Income are added to the equity and expenses are deducted from the equity. So this is going to be a summary. And now this minus equity can be transferred to the other side. Do you know that basic mathematics uh, as for the basic mathematics, when some uh, negative figure is transferred to the other side, it becomes positive. So this minus expenses can be transferred to the other side, then it becomes positive or plus. So final uh, equation we can write asset plus expenses. Understood? Because that minus comes here, therefore it is plus expenses equal equity plus income plus liabilities plus liabilities now this is the beauty right so remember this one these two behave in the same way assets and expenses behave in the same way because they are in one side and equity income and liabilities behave in the same way because that is they are in the other side okay so what is the uh, behavior asset and expenses if they are increased we debit those accounts and asset and expenses if they are decreased we use credit entries so this is uh, same for the asset and expenses. That's, that is the beauty. Okay. So here we have two double end principles. 
asset principle and expenses principle they are same and when it comes to the other side equity income and liabilities if they are increased we use credit entries and equity income and liabilities if they are decreased we use debit entries here we have three double letter principles equity principle income principle and liabilities principle got it so this is a summary and i will give another point and asset and expense accounts usually have a debit balance i don't usually have a debit balance debit balance just think about the cash account just think about the land account just think about the uh, uh, equipment account all those accounts have a debit balance give me one second write down this right uh the other side last sentence now equity income and liabilities accounts usually have a credit balance right now usually have a credit balance now remember this summary it should be very important for you and remember 17th question will be come from this aspect usually and if you look at the pattern done i right, hope you can see the board uh, there may be some kind of technical issues but don't worry uh, so we are going to face a challenge uh, so this technical stuff will also be a challenge so we have to face the challenges as teenagers not me but you we have to face challenges ahead so i know that you have the courage you have the commitment you have the strength to face those challenges okay so if anything uh, which is uh, uh, making disturbances in seeing or uh, hearing the voice uh, please let let us know okay so let's go back to the paper look at the first one now we 
is about the double end principle of increased debit or increased debit and decreased credit. So it could be an asset or an expense. Increase debit, decrease credit. So it could be an asset or expense uh, account. Now discount allowed, expense account correct, bank loan account no. It's a liability account, the other side. Got it? And when you uh, come across the uh, first item, which is not the answer, you stop reading the other things. So for example, discount allowed and expense, therefore uh, a correct category, but bank loan a liability, the other category. So don't read the other two, land and cash. That's how you can manage your time. You can save your time. Okay. And then discount received, no. Discount received is an income account. So don't read salaries, equipment and letters. Discount allowed, yes. Interest receipt, no. Interest receipt is an income account. I don't know whether you can see the board clearly. And interest paid, transportation, cash, motor vehicles. Interest paid, expense account, transportation, expense account, cash, asset account, motor vehicle, asset account. So all are asset and expenses. So the answer for the first one is four. Answer for the first one is four. Now is the board clear? Is the uh, screen clear? Some say yes, some say very few say no, but I think that overall uh, it's clear. Yes, great. Thank you. So let's go to the second question. Now remember, uh, Lamai, this time uh, you will be asked a question, question from other elements like liabilities, income and uh, equity, right? So when you have the knowledge, you will face uh, any kind of question. So you will challenge the paper. Great. So we'll go to the 18th question. Look at this. Which of the following assets is considered as current asset in an equipment renting business? Current asset, one keyword, current asset in an equipment renting uh, business. Equipment renting business. Motor lorry used for transporting equipment to customers. So it is a non-current asset. Therefore, not an answer. Because we want to select a current asset. Motor lorry is a non-current asset. Building used in the business to store equipment. No, non-current asset. Not an answer. Equipment held in the business for rentals to customers. Yes. That is of inventory, that is of stocks, right? Stocks are current assets. So answer is number three. Just read the last one, air conditioning machine. So non-current asset. Therefore, the answer for the question 18 is third one. Understood? Right. So we come to the uh, the question. Use the below information to answer question number 19 to 21. 19, 20, 21. Three questions are based on this information. Uh, three questions are uh, Which of the above transactions does not cause to change asset in the month of February? Now, if you look at the uh, past papers, uh, my dear students, you will see uh, this kind of question where you are given the equation as well as you are given the uh, transactions, number of transactions, and after that you will be asked some questions. Now, when you get a question like this, first of all, you need to record the transactions uh, using the given equation. Then you will find all the answers, right? So, uh, what I do. Uh, 
I will write the basic equation. I will write the equation from here because uh, then it will be more easier you to uh, look at the question and look at the answer. Uh, equation is asset equals equity plus liabilities. Now asset uh, 80,000 80,000, let me write it as 80, and liability is 20, if so, equity can be found as 60, because summation of equity and liability should be equal to asset, therefore equity can be found as 80, sorry, 60. Understood? Now we found the beginning equity balance, and we have been given four transactions, let's record these four transactions and then we will get all the answers all the answers right so this remember this information uh, can be used for three questions therefore if you spend some uh, like a uh, couple of minutes it's not uh, a waste it's worthwhile because this is the uh, the three questions are based on this information right so you have to plan yourself you have to uh, have a plan you have to organize the answer Right? So all these are time management techniques. Right. So the first one is purchase stock for 40,000 on credit. On credit. When you read the question, you may find some keywords, important words. So you may underline those like on credit. So when you purchase inventory, uh, A, asset increased by 40, that is inventory asset. And on credit, therefore liability increased by 40. Liability increase by 40. B paid 13,000 to a creditor. Then cash decreases by 13. Therefore, asset decreases by 13. And to a creditor. So liability decreases by 13. Liability decreases by 13. Understood? And then third one, see, sold stock costing 18,000 for 27,000 on cash basis. Now, if you record it, uh, cost of inventory being sold is 18. Therefore, it stops reduces by 18. It stops reduces by 18. And you sell this inventory at 27,000 on cash basis. So, cash increases by 27. So, asset increases by 27. Right? And cost is 18. Selling price is 27, so there is a profit because we sell at a higher price than the purchase cost. So the profit is, uh, as per my calculation, 9,000. So profit belongs to the owner, therefore equity increases by 9. Equity increases by 9. Look at here. If you have studied this transaction clearly, the net impact of this transaction is equity increases by 9, asset increases by 9. Look at here, 18 minus 27 plus, therefore net impact is 9 increase. Right? So you can write uh, the answer alternate in an alternative way, asset increases by 9, equity increases by 9. Okay? Hope this is understood. And then last one, received the electricity bill of 5000. Look at this received the electricity bill of 5000 of the month of February, that is the month being considered. This was paid in March 2023. That is very important. And we have received the bill of electricity uh, for February 2023, but it has been paid in March next month. Right? Uh, so how do we record this? This is an expense of the month. Therefore, equity decreases by 5. Equity decreases by five. Understood? Because that is an expense of the month being considered, February. But it has not been paid in February. It has been paid in March. Now tell me, by end of February, can we deduct the cash? Quick answer. By end of February, can we deduct the cash by five? No. Excellent. So what is it? Uh, there is an expense, we haven't paid it by the end of the February month. So is it an asset or a liability? 
absent a liability l quick answer yes you know that so you have studied well i am very happy okay so liability so uh, 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 we call it as accrued expense accrued electricity expense payable those are alternate ways alternate names okay so it's a liability so liability increases by 5 liability increases by 5 now we can answer any question right so what is the first question which of the above transactions does not cause does not cause does not impact does not cause to change the asset which of the above transactions does not change does not cause to change the asset look at here a asset changes b asset changes c asset changes but d it does not affect the asset therefore answer is d fourth one Answer is D. Look at the duty. Okay, so when you record this, you get all the answers. And question number twenty, the equity asset twenty eight February due to about transactions. So we can take the equity balance. Okay, equity balance. Take the balance of this line, this column. I will write it here because I have a limited space. Look at here, sixty. 69 minus 5 is 64. Therefore, answer is 64. Very simple. Therefore, the answer for the question is fourth one. Fourth one. Understood? And then uh, the change in liabilities during the month of February. Change in liabilities. Look at the question. It is not the liabilities, the value of liabilities. It is the change in liabilities. How does the liabilities change? By how much? Look at here. Now, uh, at the beginning of the month, we had twenty balance, and take the total of the liabilities at the end. Take the total of the liabilities at the end. Look at here. Twenty. Forty, sixty, sixty minus thirteen, forty-seven. Hope I am correct. Plus five, fifty-two. Am I correct? Let's go other way around. Five minus thirteen means minus eight. Minus eight plus forty, thirty-two. Thirty-two plus twenty, fifty-two. Correct. But that is not the answer, right? That is not the answer. Change in liabilities. Now, now at the beginning twenty, at the end fifty-two. So liabilities have been changed by thirty-two. Fifty-two end of the month, beginning of the month twenty. Therefore, change is thirty-two. What is thirty-two? Now we have done our questions. Ah, look at here. Okay. Now we have two answers. We have thirty-two thousand. Two answers. But you have to select the correct answer. Now liabilities have been increased by thirty-two. Thirty-two. Okay. Sorry. Thirty-two here. Yeah. Uh, 32. Where is the eraser? 32. Now liabilities have been increased by 32. The answer is uh, 31. Answer is 31. Liabilities have been increased by 32. Okay, let's go to the 22nd question. Twenty-second question. Look at here. A stationary manufacturing business sold the stock of stationery for eighty-two thousand. So it's simply a sale of inventory for eighty-two thousand to its customer, and the customer paid the full amount at the point in sales. Meaning, this is a cash sale. Because you sold these stocks to the customer at the same time or the same day, the customer 
thing is unknown. So this is a case state. Okay. And so uh, the question is source document and the prime into book. So when you do the cache sales, very simple. The prime entry book is cache book. And uh, source document is receipt. Because you get money, you receive money. So the answer is receipt and cash book. Very simple. And when you have such a simple question, uh, you have to uh, answer the question quickly and save the time. It's like now these days we have IPL. Now, like uh, Mahesh Patilana, am I correct? Matisha Patilana, yes, Matisha Patilana, and the other one, uh, I can't remember the name. Now, now they, are, they are well bowlers now. Now, when they bowl, the batsmen uh, are trying to defend them, defend themselves to these two bowlers. But when they face uh, the bowling or bowl, bowlers, other bowlers, they will have like, they will earn like 20, 30 marks, 30, 20, 30 is course. Likewise, if you uh, receive or if you get a simple question, do it quickly and save the time. And for a difficult question, that save time can be utilized. Understood? That's how we can manage time. Okay. Okay, we'll go to the 23rd question. Can I move? No. Right, 23rd one. Uh, double entry. And if you have studied the uh, subject very well, don't look at the answer. See, now look at when I do this question, I don't look at the answer because I have the confidence about myself. I just read the question and write down the answer somewhere and then match whether my answer is in the uh, answer list. Let's see. That's, that, that shows the confidence that you have. That shows the level of knowledge that you have. Right? Therefore, I don't want the answer, but I just read the question and write my own answer. Then I will match the answer, my answer with the answer list. Right? Okay, we'll do uh, the question number uh, 23. The owner of the business wrote a check of 18,000 and obtained money, ho money for his personal use. Wrote a check, drew a check from the business. The correct double entry, very simple. So it is a drawing. When the owner draws money for his personal use, his equity decreases. Mm. Equity decreases, debit. Therefore, drawings account debit by uh, 18,000. And he took this money from a check. Therefore, bank account credit, 18,000. Therefore, the answer, now this is my answer. Now I'm going to match this answer with the answer list. So, what is it? First one, very simple. Province account debit 18,000, bank account credit 18,000. Yes, excellent. Now, I might take some uh, time to answer. Meantime, if you get the answer, just uh, send me the answer via chat box. Okay, then I know that you have the correct answer and I know that you have the talent. Okay, we'll go to the 24th question. Which of the following transactions is recorded in the purchase journal? Very simple. What do we record in the purchase journal? Credit purchase of inventories or credit purchase of goods. Very simple. Uh, purchase of machine, purchase of machine, machine is a non-current asset or a fixed asset. So by, by, by reading this word, you can skip it. But in some cases, you might need to uh, read the full sentence. Okay, purchase a machine amount to 80,000 on credit uh, to be used in the business that is a non-current asset, fixed asset. Okay, and not inventory of goods purchase. Therefore, uh, skip it. Second one, purchase of raw materials amounting to 10,000 on cash basis. You can be inventory, but cash basis. No, 
If it is on cash basis, we have to record it in the cash book. Third one, purchase of trading stock amount into 25,000 on credit. So that is the answer. Answer is number three. And you see the last one, purchase of stationary amount into 3,000 on cash. On cash, that is why it is incorrect. Okay, so the answer is number three. And we'll take the answer, uh, question number 25 uh, uh, here. The petty cash balance, that's about the petty cash transactions. Petty cash balance as at 31st March 2023 was 1,500. On 1st April 2023, the next month beginning, it was received the petty cash interest. Received the petty cash interest. That is called as reimbursement of petty, petty cash interest. Okay. When we receive the petty cash interest from the main cashier, it is called as reimbursement of petty cash interest of 4,500. The petty cash balance as at 30th April 23 was 900. End of the month, the balance is 900. The petty cash payment. You might uh, prepare an account or you might prepare a schedule like this. So I, I'll prepare a schedule. Uh, look at here. Now, 1st uh, of April, we have a balance. Uh, 31st March balance is the beginning balance of April. Isn't it? Therefore, 1,500. And we got the reimbursement from the main cashier. Reimbursement of 4,500. Now, all together, we have 6,000. Now, tell anyone, how does this 6,000 uh, call? Or oh, what is this 6,000? Can anyone tell? What is this 6,000? That is not the answer. Uh, uh, an additional question. What is this 6,000? Yes. Yes, I got the answer. Yes, petty cash impressed. Petty cash impressed. Yes, excellent. Guru Karan, yes, good. Okay, uh, Onali is asking why is the uh, first answer wrong in question number 24. Look at here. Question number 24 put a purchase of a machine. Look at here, machine. Now, machine, they have purchased the machine on credit to be used in the business. So, it is a purchase of a fixed asset on cash base. Sorry, on credit basis. Now tell me an additional question. Now, if you purchase a fixed asset on credit basis, where do we record it? Which journal? An additional question based on the question raised by Onali. If you purchase fixed asset like a machinery, equipment, land or a building or motor vehicle on credit basis, where do we record it? Yes, excellent. General journal. Right? General journal. Therefore, this is not a transaction uh, which is recorded in the purchase journal. Only understood? Only? Yes, I get a lot of correct answers. It seems that you are ready for the examination. Okay, great. There is only. Ah, yes, okay, you are here. Okay, Pate, we'll see. Okay, now uh, this 6000 is called as the impressed. Beginning balance plus the reimbursement is equal to impressed. Okay, and we want to find the expense paid. How much of payment we have made? We don't know. We don't know. But at last, the balance is, I don't have uh, space, if I write it here, the balance is uh, on 30th April, 900. Okay, end of the month, the balance is 900. 
Now we had 6,000 to spend for petty cash expenses. Now after making the payments, we have a balance of 900. So how much we have spent? 6,000 minus 900, it is 5,100, isn't it? Very simple. We had 6,000 to spend, but we have a balance of 900. So we have spent only 5,100. So the answer is third one, 5,100. Okay, 5,100. Right, so go to the next one, 26. Here balance is 900, right? 26. Which of the following transactions is recorded in the bank account but not in the bank statement? It is recorded in the bank account by the business but not in the bank statement by the bank. So the bank account is maintained by the business, bank statement is maintained by the commercial bank. Got it? Right. Now, which of the following transactions is recorded in the bank account? We can see it in the bank account but not in the bank statement. Look at here. Unrecorded bank charges of 500 in the books of the business. Unrecorded bank charges means we haven't recorded that in the bank account, but we can see it in the bank statement. So that is not the answer. Other way around. Okay. Because bank charges are not usually reflected in the bank account, but can be reflected in the bank statement. And number two, cash deposit of 50,000 to the bank account. Now when you deposit cash, at the same day, it will be reflected in the bank statement, right? Assume that you go to a bank, like using the CDM cash, sorry, C, yeah, CDM cash deposit machine, and using that CDM cash deposit machine, you deposit 20,000 cash. On the same day, it will be reflected in the bank statement. Therefore, second transaction can be seen in both places. What do you mean by both places? our bank account and bank statement. Remember, right? This time question might uh, be focusing on that. Uh, like uh, select a transaction where we can see the transaction in, in both bank account and bank statement. Okay, so if you have that knowledge, you can answer any question, right? Now this is not that kind of a question. Uh, we can see the transaction in the bank account, but not in the bank statement, third one. Direct deposit of 20,000 received directly to the bank by a debtor. Now, direct deposit, we can see in the bank statement, not in the bank account. So, that is not an answer. Last one should be the answer, isn't it? Payment to a creditor by a check. Now, when we pay for a credit, bank account credit in our side, in our business side. Okay? When we pay for a creditor, bank account credit. 47,000, which is unpresented during the period. Now, the creditor, our supplier, hasn't presented the check to the bank. Therefore, it should not be, theoretically, it should not be reflected, reflected in the bank statement. So, when we issue the check to the creditor, our bank account credit, but it has not been presented by the creditor. Therefore, we can't see that in the bank statement. Therefore, the answer is fourth part. Okay, fourth part. Okay, one uh, additional question. Uh, what is the, there are two additional questions I, I'll answer. First one is, uh, what is petty cash impressed? So the petty cash impressed is the limit of cash set by the main cashier to be used for petty cash expenses for a period by the petty cashier. Or it can be defined as, if you want, you can write down petty cash impressed. Now the question is, what is the petty cash impressed? What is the 6,000? Write down the maximum amount, the maximum amount, the maximum amount, upper limit, the maximum amount. that can be that can be spent 
the maximum amount that can be spent by a petty cashier by a petty cashier during a period by a petty cashier during a period maximum amount that can be spent by a petty cashier during the period got it so that is the maximum amount maximum amount upper limit ceiling who set the petty cash interest the main cashier main cashier set the upper limit maximum amount okay mm -hmm. the next question is uh, yeah. what is the double entry for the bank overdraft okay uh, you can't uh, have a double entry for the bank overdraft because bank overdraft is a liability bank overdraft happens when you exceed your bank balance assume that your bank balance is just uh, uh, just uh, 3000 your balance is 3000 now you can maximally spend 3000 isn't it that is basic, that, that's the basic logic but if you want to make a payment of 5000 your bank balance is not adequate your bank balance is not enough then you can ask the bank for a temporary short term loan okay because you want to pay 5000 amount but your balance is just 3000 it's not sufficient or adequate so you can ask for a short term loan so that is called as a bank loan bank overdraft now if you use the bank overdraft say for example you pay you see the bank overdraft 5000 payment then bank balance becomes negative 2000 so that is called as a bank overdraft but you can't write a double entry for the bank overdraft loan okay you can't write a double entry for a bank overdraft understood lot of questions uh it seems that you have questions uh uh when you study the subject then uh, in the 26th question third one is also recorded in both uh, right both 26 direct deposit of 20000 received directly to the bank by debtor now it is not a deposit it is a direct deposit meaning one of our customers or debtors uh, has deposited money directly to a bank account usually we don't know whether that uh, money has been de deposited or not we come to know we or we know about that transaction only when we receive the bank statement okay usually direct deposits can be uh, identified when we receive the bank statement therefore direct deposits can be reflected in the bank statement usually not in the bank account not both sides uh Question twenty. It is ask the equity value of twenty. Then sir, can't we say the answer is sixty nine thousand because the electricity bill hasn't been paid? Okay, interesting question. Okay, let me go for the uh, previous question twenty four. This one. Now he is asking. Uh, now this electricity bill hasn't been paid. During the month of February, now he's asking, can we skip this transaction? No. Uh, you know that there are uh, accrued expenses, expenses payable. Whether you paid it or not, we have recorded expense. Okay, expense is expense irrespective of the payment. I don't know whether you understand this. Expense is expense. Now assume that you receive the electricity bill of. Uh, uh last month in your home in your house okay so when you receive the electricity bill for the last month you have uh, incurred or you have what do you, how, how do i say uh, you have consumed that facility so expense has been created but you haven't paid the bill yet therefore expense is expense irrespective of the payment therefore this expense should be deducted from the equity though it is not paid as it is not paid it is a liability that is called as accrued expense hope you understood it okay lot of questions
Okay, I'll take uh, 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 another question and go to the paper, and then uh, we'll discuss some more questions, and then I'll, again I'll come to the uh, questions. Okay, otherwise I'll, I won't be able to finish the questions or the content. Uh, I have a question. So I assume that the drawer who has a current account in People's Bank can issue a check to the payee. And the payee has a current account in the BOC Bank. Uh, can we deposit a People's Bank check in BOC Bank? Yes, of course. Assume that uh, you uh, draw a check in favor of me and your bank is, say, uh, People's Bank. Okay. Uh, and you give that check to me and assume that my bank is BOC, I'm going to deposit the check in my account. Can Okay. There are some exceptions you might uh, learn under the business studies subject, but usually if it is in favor of me, I can. Okay. Right. Yes, uh, there are some couple of questions uh, raised and I will take up all these questions a little later. We'll focus on the paper and meantime, uh, I'm, after having some uh, more questions, we'll discuss the uh, questions raised. Okay, we are in mini stop. 27. Okay, this is going to be a bit of a difficult question. Bit of a difficult question. Right, let's do that. The favorable balance as per the bank statement as at 1st December 22 was 28,000. 1st December means the beginning balance of the month. Okay, beginning balance of the month. Uh, following information is provided. Bank charges 500 unrecorded in the bank account in the business. Direct remittance by the customer 22,000. Unpresented checks as at 31st January 2023 was 36,000. Uh, check presented and paid by the bank during the month was 70,000. Checks deposited and realized by the bank during the month was 95,000. Bit of a difficult question. The bank account balance as at 31st January 23 before adjustments. I think there is an error. That's why I am thinking about it. There is a typo. Uh, Okay, uh, please uh, change this as 31st December. Uh, yes, should be, uh, let will see, this should be 31st January 23. Bank statement balance, bank statement piece, Lamai. Bank statement balance as at 31st January 23. Okay, it should be 31st January 23. Bit of a difficult question. Let's see whether you answer is correct if you have attempted the question or uh, not. Let's see how to uh, answer the question. 31st January 23. Uh, now, as this is a uh, uh, bit of uh, uh, informative question. Let me take the board. Uh, you know the basic formats of the adjusted bank account and the bank reconciliation statement. Now remember this is the basic uh, format of the adjusted bank account and the bank reconciliation statement, right? So. If I write a T account like uh, this for adjusted bank account, write down 
adjusted bank account. This is also called as revised. Revised, corrected, adjusted, same meaning. Okay, T account. And we will prepare the bank reconciliation. Simply we call it as bank break. Bank break. And format of the bank reconciliation is this. We take the adjusted, adjusted bank balance, adjusted bank balance to the top. This is the typical format, usual format, normal format. Okay. Adjusted bank balance, meaning the balance in this account, adjusted bank balance. And we add issued, but not yet presented. Issued, but not yet presented. I mean the checks issued. This is all about checks, right? Issued, but not yet presented. We have issued but not yet presented by the recipients. And minus uh, deposited, I mean checks deposited, deposited, but not yet realized. Not yet realized. Realized means it has not been credited to the bank account. Okay, realized. It has not been cashed to the bank account. We have deposited it, but it has it hasn't been cash. It has it hasn't been credited to the bank. Okay. And if you adjust these two, the balance should be equal to the bank statement balance. So last item is bank statement balance. Bank statement balance. Now this is the normal format for a bank reconciliation statement. Remember, okay? So this is the adjusted bank account. It is also called as revised corrected bank bank account. And we take that balance here on top of the list, adjusted bank balance, and we add uh, checks issued, but not yet presented. And we either deduct or subtract checks deposited, but not yet realized. And then ultimately we can come to the bank statement balance. Got it? So this is the normal format for a bank reconciliation statement. Right, let's substitute the figures from the uh, question. Do you need more time to draw these formats? Ah, uh, okay. Uh, uh, one uh, Question, uh, can we write a T account? Now, uh, very good question. Now, if you come back to the paper, now this is an MCQ question. Okay, MCQ. Where you want to mark the answer. You don't want to show the workings. You don't want to show how you have uh, derived this answer. Now, in a case like that, don't write the full format. It will be a waste of the time. But if you come to the second part, a different story. Okay, now here we have to take the correct answer by marking the correct answer. Got it? So that's why I have drawn the uh, T format uh, just to get this answer. Right. So as we have come to the question, we read the information. Now look at bank statement balance as at 31st January. That is the bank statement balance end of the month, 28,000. So let's substitute it here. We have been given bank statement balance 28 here. This balance has been given right down. And this is all about filling the blanks. Right? Once you write down the formats, it's all about the filling the blanks. Right? So 28 is given. And next, the bank charges 500 unrecorded in the bank account in the business. Now it should be recorded where in the adjusted bank account. Okay, adjusted bank account. Now, Ramai, one uh, advice to you 
Now we want to find the adjusted bank balance. That balance comes from either debit side or credit side. Because in a bank account, it could be a favorable balance or an OD balance, unfavorable balance. Right? Therefore, depending on that, the balance comes either from debit side or credit side. So in a case like that, my advice is leave the first row. Leave the first row. The entire row can be left. Right? Then bank charges. We found the bank charges. Now when you record the bank charges in the adjusted bank account, the bank balance decreases. Bank is an asset account, asset decreases. Asset decreases credit. Okay? Therefore, bank account credit, let's say charges. Let's say charges 500. Uh, as I uh, have written in uh, uh, 28, or you can write 28,000. So let me put it here 0 0.5. Is it confusing? If so, 28,000, write down 28,000 here, then 500 here. Okay? 28,500. As I have, you know, shortened the number, 28, here, 0.5. If it is confusing, write down the full number, 28,500. Right? And then, direct remittances by the customer, 22,000. Directly, a customer has remitted money to our bank account. Right? So, it has been missed, omitted from our bank account. So, we, we have recorded. Now, when we record the direct remittance, our bank balance increases, asset increases debit, therefore direct remittance debit, direct remittance debit, uh, it's, uh, let me take the figure from the paper, I'll have a print, uh, it's uh, 22, 22, if you write the full number, 22,000, right, and then uh, unpresented checks. I will read the question, then you can uh, write down. Unpresented checks as at 31st January 23 was 36,000. So we know the unpresented check. We have issued but not yet presented. Write down uh, it's 36. If I write it here, 36. Okay. Uh, then checks presented and paid by the bank. Presented and paid by the bank during the month was 70,000. So it has been presented. Therefore, don't take that into the bank reconciliation because it has been presented by the bank. Okay. Here we take only unpresented checks, not take presented. Okay. Don't take that. Why it has been given to cheat you, to mislead you. Okay. The checks deposited and realized by the bank during the month was 95. Deposited and realized. So it is not unrealized. Therefore, none. Deposited and realized. Okay, deposited and realized. Now, Lamai, uh, first of all, we can find the balance here. Write a scale like this. We can find the balance here. Okay. Now this is basically the basic mathematics. Basic mathematics. I will give you a hint or a very good point. Now this is the final answer. Okay. This is a bit of a difficult question, but uh, learn how to uh, get the answer for a question like this. Now this is an answer. This is the final answer. Now if you uh, find uh, any number, if you want to find any number from the answer, I'll give a hint. You have to backward calculate. You have to have a backward calculation. Write down an uh, arrow like this, backward calculation from up to, sorry, bottom to up. Answer to the another variable. From answer to the another variable. Bottom up. Right? When you do a, such a calculation, now the answer is 28, answer is 28, and this is a plus item, isn't it? Plus, plus, positive item. And when you go backward, the added item should be subtracted. 
Added the item should be subtracted. If you have subtracted items, that should be added. The reverse approach. Okay, remember. Now, added item is 36. Now, if I want to go to backward calculation, uh, then this added the item should be deducted minus. You can check it, right? So, 28 minus 36, it's uh, 8 minus, 8 minus, okay, 8 minus. Now, remember that one, from an answer, if you go to the another place, another variable, another amount, do the reverse calculation. Added item should be subtracted. Subtracted item should be added. Now our answer is minus eight. Write out minus eight. Now just look at whether your answer is correct. Look at here. Minus eight and plus thirty six, twenty eight. Minus eight and plus thirty six equals to twenty eight. So your answer is correct. Okay. The adjusted bank balance is therefore minus eight, meaning, and bank overdraft. Bank overdraft, right? Bank overdraft, right? Because it's minus. Now, bank overdraft. Now, tell me, uh, is a bank overdraft an asset or a liability? Is bank overdraft an asset or a liability? Liability, right? Liability, excellent. Now, if it is a liability, what is the normal balance, debit or credit? Quick answer. If it is a liability, what is the balance, debit or credit? Credit. Very good, excellent. Now you know that summary provides all the information. Right? The summary that I have uh, uh, written. So liability account has a credit balance. Okay, right. Now we get an OD balance. Now if it is an OD balance, it is a liability. If it is a liability, credit balance. Credit balance nine, sorry eight. Right? So it should be carried down from the debit side. Carried down from the debit side. Hope that it is understood. This is this is an OD balance, a liability. If it is a liability, credit balance, therefore from the uh, credit side it should be brought forward. And from the debit side it should be carried. Now, if you balance this out, debit side is 22 plus 8, 30. 22 plus 8, 30, right? Take that balance to other side, 30. 30, now we want to find the balance before adjustments. Look at the question. Balance, bank account balance before adjustments. Look at here, before adjustments. Before adjustments, right? Now, uh, total is 30, 30 minus 0 0.5. The before adjustment balance is 29.5. It comes from the credit side. So this is an OD balance. OD balance. Therefore, answer for the question is, this is a bit of a difficult question. Uh, first one, answer uh, is first one. Understood. Answer is first one. Right. So we'll come to the twenty eighth question. Answer is first one. I did not mark twenty eight. Which of the following is an error that does not cause to create a difference in the trial balance? Okay. Difference in the trial balance. Okay. Does not create a difference in the trial balance. We'll take one by one. Uh, commission income receipt of 27,000 correctly recorded in the cash book. So cash book is debited because it is a commission receipt. When we receive the commission, cash book debit. Okay, so cash book has been correctly debited, but recorded in the debit side of the interest expense account. Uh, cash book debit, then interest expense debit. 
both entries are recorded in the left side therefore definitely the trial balance will be different okay i mean trial balance will be in uh, uh, difference it does not tally the debit total and credit total are not agreed tally because both entries are in the debit side but question is does not cause to create a difference okay so this is not the answer second one the credit sale of 41000 has been correctly recorded in the sales journal okay but recorded in the debit side of the creditors account uh, now it has been correctly recorded in the sales journal meaning that sales account is credited by 41 you can write down uh, the answer like this then you can compare now here cash book debit interest expense debit both entries are in the debit side therefore definitely uh, trial balance will be uh, in the disagreement or different right but in this case it has been correctly recorded in the sales journal therefore sales account credit 41 it is correct but debit side in the creditors control account sorry creditors account okay now anyway it has been debited to the creditors account it should have been debited to the debtor's account because it is a credit sale, but it has been debited to the creditor's account. But anyway, debit entry is corresponding to the credit entry, meaning debit entry a similar credit entry. Therefore, uh, due to this transaction, trial balance will be equal, tally, agree. Right? Therefore, answer is number two. Answer is number two. And if you just read the third and fourth one, just for your knowledge, salary payment of 75,000 has been correctly recorded in the cash book, meaning cash book has been credited, but recorded as 7,500 of PS. Amounts are different. Therefore, it will create a difference in the trial balance. Receipt from a debtor, 35,000 has been correctly recorded in the debtor's account, meaning the debtor's account has been credited by 35, but recorded as 3,500 of PS because amounts are different, therefore trial balance will be different. Therefore the answer is second one. Okay, good question. Uh, next one, look at here, a good question. The balance of the bank loan account, okay, tell me, if you don't tell me the answer, I don't do the seminar hereafter, I mean, the seminar will be over from that point, okay? Uh, if it is a bank loan account, what is the type of that account? I mean, asset, liability, equity, income and expenses. What is the element? Just write the first letter like asset A, liability is L, equity E, L, okay. Meaning that I have to continue the seminar. I thought that you will not answer. Anyway. Okay, so all of the answers are correct. Bank loan is a liability account. Now the next question is, if it is a liability account, what is the balance of it? Debit or credit? Excellent. Credit. Okay. Now what has happened? So this is a bit of a difficult one. The balance of the bank loan account, technically or theoretically, should be in the credit side. Yes, because it is a liability account, they are balancing credit has not been taken to the trial balance all right trial balance the balance uh, created in the suspense account due to this error now let me uh, tell or teach that question like this now write down a trial balance like this trial balance Write down the trial balance like this debit column, credit column. Write down a trial balance like this debit column and credit column. Just if catch because you are not answering for the questions of the second part. This is the first part. Then just if catch. Rough province, rough formats. Okay. Now you saw, uh, you told that bank loan is a liability account, therefore the balance is credit. Okay, 
and assume that you obtain the bank loan. Now, when you obtain the bank loan, what is the double entry? If you obtain a bank loan of 350,000, what is the double entry? If you obtain a bank loan of 350,000, what is the double entry? Excellent. Cash account debit, right? Cash account debit. 350,000 bank loan account credit 350,000. Okay, write down this cash account debit 350,000 bank loan account credit 350,000. So, this is the double entry for the bank loan bank loan receipt. Write down this cash account debit bank loan account credit. Now, what has happened? Bank loan balance bank loan balance has not been taken to the trial balance has not been taken to the trial balance but it doesn't say that the corresponding debit balance has not been taken in other words we have to assume that the debit balance has been taken to the trial balance correctly therefore write down cash cash balance is 350000 Okay, it says in the question, bank loan balance has not been taken to the trial balance. So, credit side, there is no balance. But the corresponding debit entry, you know that every transaction should have debit entry, one debit entry and one credit entry. That is the double entry uh, system, right? Therefore, the corresponding debit entry is there. But we haven't taken the bank loan balance to the credit side. Now, due to this, there will be a difference created in the trial balance in the credit side. Because debit side total is 350, right? So, there is a difference of 350 in the credit side. Write down like this. Difference created in the trial balance in the credit side, 350. Write down like this. Write down. Now, that difference will be transferred to where? Where do we transfer to? Where do we transfer this difference? Quickly, quick answer. We check out. Where do we transfer this account? Where do we transfer this difference? Quickly. Suspense account, yes. Suspense account. Suspense account. Okay. What do you mean by a suspense account? What do, we, what do you mean by a suspense account? A temporary account which is used to transfer the difference in the trial balance is called as a suspense account. Write down somewhere. Write down. The suspense account is an account. Yes. Write down. Additional question. Suspense account. The suspense account is an account. The suspense account is an account quickly. The suspense account is an account. Shall we write like this? The suspense account is a temporary account. The suspense account is a temporary account. Temporary, temporary, not permanent. Suspense, the suspense account is a temporary account. Temporary account which is used to which is used to which is used to record the difference record the difference it is used to record the difference created in a trial balance created in the trial balance created in the trial balance created in the trial balance okay okay now let me ask an additional question another one now after you correct errors what is the balance of the suspense account after correct all the errors happened 
what is the balance of the current account sorry what is the balance of the suspense account difficult question after correct all the errors found what is the balance of the suspense account zero yes zero that's why it is called as a temporary account got it now that is not the answer for here right now let's come to the uh, question now the difference came from the credit side now prepare a suspense account prepare a little suspense account like this prepare a little suspense account like this now tell me from which side this 350000 is recorded from which side this 350000 is recorded and difference came from the credit side therefore its balance should also be appeared reflected in the credit side remember if the difference comes from the credit side of the trial balance that will be reflected in the same side in suspense account so if the difference comes from the credit side suspense account credit if the difference comes from the debit side suspense account debit therefore the answer for the question is 350000 credit unsisted one unsisted one 350000 credit hope you understood right let's come to the uh, 30th question 30th question it's uh, regarding the subscription income and uh, i have seen that uh, students uh, see this topic as a difficult one i don't know why but usually students uh, take this topic as a difficult topic Let's see how to answer for a question like this. The subscription fees, as per the income statement, look at this. As per the income statement of a newly started sport club, was eighty thousand. Now tell me the income statement. What do we see uh, in relation to the subscription income? Uh, actually, I have told you the answer. right in the income statement what do we see in relation to the subscription is it income or is it in the income statement what do we see in the uh, what do we see in relation to the sub subscription uh, income or is it income yes so look at here subscription fees as per the income statement of a, a newly started sport club was 80000 that is income okay subscription income is 8000 the annual subscription fee of a member is 2000 annually the society or the club uh, is charging 2000 a member per member five members have not paid subscription for the year now five members haven't paid the subscription for the year the subscription fees to be included in the receipt and payment account look at here subscription fees to be included in the receipt and payment account now tell me what do we see in the receipt and payment account in relation to subscription fees receipt or income what do we see in the receipt and payment account in relation to the subscription fees income or receipt yes income or receipt yes correct answers you are very good receipt so the question Uh, is asking or uh, we are asked to find the receipt now the income is 80 and five members haven't paid the subscription subscription for the year so receivable receivable how much uh, five members that thing to 2000 per member therefore 10000 receivable isn't it Ten thousand receivable. Five members into two thousand, ten thousand receivable. Income is eighty thousand. Of that, ten thousand is still receivable. Therefore, receipt is seventy. Receipt is seventy. 
Got it? So the answer for the question is third one. Answer for the question is third one. Write down. Uh, right. Uh, Yelani, the answer for the question 27. Let me check. Because I can't remember. 27. Second, uh, sorry. 27. You are asking 20. Yes, first one. Answer is first one. Yelani is first one. Uh, I don't get to a question, uh, Sashi Ma. Uh, I don't know whether you are a girl or a boy, because Sashi Ma, Sashi Ma, or Sashi Ma. Don't know. Please excuse me on that. So don't be calculated for the first year. First year, first year, you mean... Uh, first year... Yes, because this is uh, annual subscription, right? Annual subscription, I mean for a year or annually, they charge 2000 per member. Five members haven't paid subscription. So five members into 2000, 10,000 is zero. Our income is 80,000. I mean, the relevant income, relevant amount is 80,000. Of that, 10,000 is receivable. So we have received 70,000. Ah, I now now I understand. Now this is annual subscription, so don't multiply this by twelve. Now, if you look at the previous questions, in some questions you are given the monthly subscription fee. If you are given the monthly subscription fee, you need to multiply that by twelve. But here you have been given the annual subscription fee for a year. Therefore, in a case like that, don't multiply that by twelve. Understood? Those are keywords. And if you identify, if you understand those keywords, you won't read the question twice. If you don't read the question twice, you can save the time. That's one of the time management techniques. Okay, read the question at the first instance and understand it and answer it. And if you read the question to the second time, the time you spend to read the first time is a waste. Okay. So when you read the question, you may underline the keywords like annual, look at it, annual. When you know it is annual, yearly rate, yearly fee, therefore you don't need to multiply that by 12. Right. Okay, give me some uh, more time to explain the difference between the unpresented checks and unrealized checks. I'll do that. But I'll take up a few more questions. Use the below information to answer question number 31 to 32. Right. right you can see uh, both questions here. Direct labor cost incurred during the month. And if the selling price per unit is 70, the profit per unit. Right. It's all about a manufacturing entity, manufacturing company, manufacturing business. The following information relates to a sweet food manufacturer for the month of May 2023. Wet flour, sugar and other materials use 150,000. Other direct cost 10,000. We can see a prime cost. Prime cost. Now I am asking a question. Does this prime cost include these ingredients and other direct cost? Does this prime cost include like flour, sugar, and other materials as well as the other direct cost? Yes or no? Yes. You know, prime cost is equal to direct material, direct labor, direct other. So we have been given direct direct material, DM here, DL here, DL here. Okay. So these two items are already included in the prime cost, right? Therefore, we can easily find the direct labor cost. 
how summation of these two is 160000 but prime cost is 200 so the balance is 40 what is that balance direct labor cost so the answer is third part got it answer is third part very simple do i want to explain it further no i don't think so if i do within a couple of seconds direct material uh 161150 and direct labor we have to find direct other 10 all to the prime cost 200 okay here 150 160 to derive to 100 we need another cost that is direct labor cost next question if the selling price per unit is 70 what is the profit usually put the selling price is comprised the summation of cost and profit write down selling price is consisted or comprises the cost and profit write down as a equation quickly selling price is equal to the cost plus profit now selling price is given as 70 substitute 70 here substitute 70 here right and if we know the cost per unit we can find the profit if we know the cost per unit we can find the profit isn't it if we know the cost per unit we can find the profit now we can find the cost per unit and it is very simple look at the question and we have been given production cost production cost means the manufacturing cost and also we know the number of units manufactured 7000 so if you divide the manufacturing cost of 280000 by 7000 units you get the cost per unit so 280000 divided by 7000 very simple manufacturing cost is 280000 divide that by 7000 units manufactured these zeros can be cut and here uh, One here four forty cost is forty so the profit is thirty profit is thirty therefore the answer for the question number thirty two is second one answer is second one very good question. got it now my dear students you will see the same pattern in the examination paper right the first question will come from the uh, double entry and then equation then adjustment entries uh, likewise the order which i have used is the order that typically you can see in the paper right okay we'll come to the next one 33 and 34 33 and 34 and thereafter a uh, couple of questions six questions will usually uh, be tested from the financial statements okay we'll see how to how to manage the time and get the answers for all six questions okay so that is our target then the first part is over you have to be very quick you have to be very uh, uh strategic like you have to find the ways to minimize the time are uh, required you want to find the ways to get the correct answer like this like earlier you have to use the methods okay anyway mm -hmm. like this right 
we come to the 33 and 34. We'll see. Ranmini business obtain a building on, on a monthly rental of 25,000. Now, when you read this kind of a question, Lamai, you need to underline the key places, keywords, important words, as I said earlier, right? So if you have the print of the paper, you may underline the monthly rental. Look at your monthly rental. Obtain a building. Now remember, in some papers, you have been given the, uh, the question that the business has given the building on rent. If the business has given the building on rent, is it rent expense or rent income? Tell me. If the business has given the building for rent for someone else, is the rent, rent income applicable or rent expense applicable? Very good, rent income. Rent income, right? So either one will be tested. But here, the building has been obtained on rent. Now, if you, I mean, if the business obtains a building on rent, it is an, it's all about the rent expense. Okay, so clearly identify whether this is a rent expense or a rent income. Either one will be tested. Okay, so here obtain. We know that if it is a, 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 a building obtained on rent, so it will be a rent expense. Got it? Right. Now monthly rental is 25,000. That is also understood. On 1st May 2022. Right. Now look at the ending date 31st March 2023. Write down a timeline like this. Timeline ending date is 31st March 23. Write down a timeline like this. Timeline, you know the timeline. Time, 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 date and months and years timeline. Ending date. Now tell me. If the ending date is 31st March 23, what is the starting date of this year? Can anyone tell me the starting date, commencing, commencing date? Now this is a, this is a year, Pute. Arushi, this is a year, not a month. Okay. During the year, look at here, during the year. When does this year start? Yes, yes. No, uh, Yashini, this is a year put it. Ending date is 31st March 23. 31st March 23. So you have to deduct a year, 12 month period from this date. And it is 31st March 22. Isn't it? 31st March 22 or else you can say 1st April 22 both are correct because ending date of this becomes the beginning date of next year isn't it? I mean the balance therefore you can write it like this 31st March 22 or 1st April 22 write down quickly quickly write down However, this building has been obtained on rent on 1st May 22, 2022. Some we are here. Write down 1st May 22. 1st May 22. Now count the, num count the number of months from this day to this day. From this day to this day. How many months? May, 5th May, 5th means May, May, June, can't do any sequence. May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March. 11. How many months to pay? Count. May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March. 11, 
yes sir shall i give you another method to find this find this uh, number of months now starting month is april isn't it now april month during the april month we haven't obtained this building on rent we obtained the building on rent from first may therefore for a year 12 months 12 months but it was not in the uh, april month therefore 12 minus 1 11 so this can be found from other way there are 12 months in a year but in the april this building was not in the business therefore minus 1 equals 11 so you can count the number of months basically right what is the uh, what is the uh, question there are two questions couple of questions now it says uh, during the year ended 31st march 2023 the business has paid look at here paid 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 cash paid 250000 as rentals for the building but we can find the rent expense here rent expense rent expense how 11 month into 25000 per month 11 month into 25000 per month 25000 into 10 250 and another 25 275 is it correct 275000 Okay, eleven months into twenty-five, two hundred seventy-five. But they have paid only two hundred fifty. So now they have twenty-five thousand prepaid or payable. Tell me the answer quickly. Now they have twenty-five thousand payable or prepaid. Payable. You know how to record the payable expense. Relevant expense account debit, payable account credit, which is also called as accrued expense. Right. So the Twenty-five thousand payable or accrued? How? Twenty-five uh, thousand. This is not the answer. Not prepayment. Rent expense. Yes. Rent expense account debit twenty-five thousand. Rent payable or accrued rent credit twenty-five thousand. The answer is number three. Answer is number three. Next one. Rent to be included in the income statement. Now tell me, in the income statement, what do we see? Rent payment or rent expense? Quickly, in the income statement, what do we see? Rent income for rent uh, expense or rent payment? What do we see? In the income statement, what do we see? Rent expense or rent payment? Rent expense. Okay, rent expense. So the rent expense is the relevant amount for the period, 11 month into 25, 275. Very simple. So the answer is number one. Answer is number one. Understood? Now we have come to the 35th question. Now remember from this onwards. From this question onwards, the focus is on the financial statements. Okay, focus is on the financial statements. So if you prepare the uh, uh, the income statement and the statement of financial position, you will find all the answers. All the answers. Okay, but have, the challenge is you have to prepare this uh, quickly within couple of minutes. Okay, within a couple of minutes. Okay, so uh, uh, we have been asked different questions like cost of sales, gross profit, net profit, total expense, the value of the total current liabilities, total value of the equity and non-current liabilities. Lot of questions, but don't worry. If you prepare uh, these two financial statements, I mean income statement and statement of financial position. You will find all the answers, right? All the answers, right? We'll uh, prepare a format. Mm, I'll uh, use the board.
so this is my income statement now remember good day now we are answering for the first part there we want to mark the correct answer we don't want to show the workings therefore we can use short formats don't worry about the wordings and you know the formats or don't worry because we want just the answer right so this is my income statement income statement or we call it call it as statement of profit or loss statement of profit or loss okay we'll prepare the format prepare the format we have sales minus cost of sales how do we find the cost of sales we have beginning stock on that we have to add purchases minus ending stock then we get the cost of sales sales minus cost of sales we get the gross profit one of the answers right you can use simple words because here we want the answer only and on the gross profit we can add other income other income keep like two three rows and here remember kute we are answering again and again i am telling the same thing uh we are answering for the first part therefore therefore we don't want the perfect solution perfect format therefore what i do i deduct all the expenses i deduct all the expenses without classification without classification deduct expenses then we will get what net profit net profit and also we want the statement of financial position let me write it uh, in the short form statement of financial position statement of financial position okay let me write it like this uh there may be slight differences uh, of the format that you follow and the format that i follow uh, i think that uh, you have come to the uh, you know uh, end of your studies right within a couple of days you will be having the examination therefore you know all these things you have studied these things right therefore there are discrepancies discrepancies like differences between my formats and your formats you can adjust your own formats right so i can take like uh, two columns two columns non current asset and keep uh, three rows current asset and there is an order in the current asset on top of the current asset we take closing or ending inventory ending inventory on stock both are same then we get debtors and lastly we get usually cash it could be bank as well then we get total asset and then other side uh we have to have the equity how do we find the equity uh, we have beginning capital on that we have to add profit if you have drawings you have to deduct drawings from here 
if you have additional capital you have to add additional capital here but in this question you don't see and even if you look at the past papers you don't see drawings and additional capital if i don't write those two here and then we have non current liabilities keep two rows and lastly current liabilities on top of the current liabilities usually creditors are listed and such a basic format you need to have write down this format Okay. Uh, meantime, uh, you are preparing the format. So uh, let's uh, have a quick, uh, uh, like, and and important information. Uh, so let me invite Danushka to uh, share that 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 piece of important information. Danushka, over to you. Is there any shortcut that I can be successful? Hey guys, I suppose you're someone who is thinking what should I do after my olivals? How should I build my career path? Is there any shortcut that I can be successful in my life? So I think you have come to the right presentation where I will say you the best one of the best qualifications that you can achieve at a very young age in order to be professionally qualified and also academically qualified and become successful so what is this qualification that gives you a number of benefits it is none other than acca so what exactly is acca acca is the world's number one professional qualification for chartered accountancy. This qualification is recognized across and also it has a number of including Sri Lanka. So if you could get this qualification, you are recognized as a professional chartered accountant or a finance specialist. So as you can see, there's a lot of benefits of this course program. So if we move on to the advantages of following ACCA, there's a numerous amount of them. I'll tell you specifically the three main advantages of following ACCA. The first advantage is Actually, this is not a professional or qualification advantage, but an age advantage for you who has, who is thinking about what to do after your olivers. 
I suppose you are someone who is around the age of 17. So if you are thinking how should I create my career path, this is the right qualification for you to pick up because this qualification is completed within two years. So even before sitting for your A-levels, you are being professionally qualified as an Associate Chartered Certified Accountant under ACCA. So, this gives you a corporate advantage over everyone in the industry, which is a professional qualification to you, even before sitting for your A-levels. Just think about it. So, if you come to the next advantage, which is the second advantage of following ACCA. Now, suppose that you are thinking, I need to follow common subjects for my ACCA. ACCA has for all the subjects in the comma stream that you're going to do. There are a number of students who has followed ACCA and also a level comma stream in parallel and they could get good results because of that because it becomes easier for them to follow the A level subjects when they have ACCA and the education that they gain.
institution in Sri Lanka for ACCA. MyEnrich.LK has educated more than thousands of students under ACCA and they have guaranteed for high quality teaching and has a pass rate of over 95% over the past few years. And I must say, from this institution, you get the opportunity of learning at your own convenience. How? They are offering you the chance to select your convenient place, your convenient time, and the number of times that you need to learn a particular subject in order to understand that particular subject matter well. So, this is really a flexible institution that offers ACCA, which is a huge opportunity for you as this offers the opportunity to learn at your own convenience and comfort of your own home. So not only that, MyEnrich.LK is provides a number of scholarship opportunities. This time for students who will be sitting for all level examination, they are offering a number of scholarship opportunities, but a limited number of scholarship opportunities. So don't wait, hurry up and grab this opportunity. So how can you get this scholarship opportunity? Hey guys, I suppose you're someone who is thinking, what should I do after my olives? How should I build my career path? Is there any shortcut that I can be successful in my life? So I think you have come to the right presentation where I will say you the best, one of the best qualifications that you can achieve at a very young age in order to be professionally qualified and also academically qualified and become successful. So what is this qualification that gives you a number of benefits? It's none other than ACCA. So what exactly is ACCA? ACCA is the world's number one professional qualification for chartered accountancy. This qualification is recognized across the globe and also it has a number of benefits. This qualification is offered in around 183 countries including Sri Lanka. So if you could get this qualification, you are recognized as a professional chartered accountant or a finance specialist. So as you can see, there's a lot of benefits of this course program. So if we move on to the advantages of following ACCA, there's a numerous amount of them. I'll tell you specifically the three main advantages of following ACCA. The first advantage is actually this is not a professional or qualification advantage, but an age advantage for you who has who is thinking about what to do after your olivers. 
I suppose you are someone who is around the age of 17. So if you are thinking how should I create my career path, this is the right qualification for you to pick up because this qualification is completed within two years. So even before sitting for your A-levels, you are being professionally qualified as an associate chartered certified accountant under ACCA. So this gives you a corporate advantage over everyone in the industry, which is a professional qualification to you even before sitting for your A-levels. Just think about it. So if we come to the next advantage, which is the second advantage of following ACCA. Now, suppose that you're thinking, I need to follow common subjects for my A-level stream. So that is a huge value added advantage if you are following ACCA. Why? Because ACCA has subjects which can be a help for all the subjects in the comma stream that you're going to do. There are a number of students who has followed ACCA and also a level comma stream in parallel and they could get good results because of that because it becomes easier for them to follow the A level subjects when they have ACCA qualification and the education that they gain from it. So next if we come to the third advantage which is the most important advantage of getting this qualification. First of all let me tell you about the levels in ACCA or the structure of ACCA. ACCA has three levels. In the first level there are three subjects which need to be completed within around six months and in the second level there are six subjects which needs to be completed within around a year. So in order to complete ACC another six months is needed with four subjects. So altogether there are 13 subjects which need to be completed within 24 months or we can say it has two years. Now the third advantage is the most important advantage. ACCA has signed agreements with a number of universities. Now one of those main universities is Oxford Brookes University. Now what they have promised is that if you could complete the first and the second level of ACCA they are offering you the the honors degree in applied accountancy so by around four years to complete a degree but with this opportunity of ACC you are getting the advantage of completing a BSc applied accountancy degree in just one and a half years which is a huge advantage so if we come to the other advantage, uh, ACCA has also signed agreements with another great university, which is University of London. Now what they have said is that they will be providing the Masters of Accountancy for those who complete the entire two years of ACCA, which is a huge benefit because in order to gain a master's you have to complete the degree but here by completing one and half of AC you get a BSc honors degree and once you complete the entire two years you get a master's degree by just completing only the thesis. So as a person who has just finished your O levels and is thinking about your future career path this is the best option as ACC is providing your career path by the age of 19 you will be able to finish your professional qualification and two academic qualification and next what you can do is after you finish your A levels you can enter into the job market which is a huge advantage for you a huge corporate and a competitive advantage for you as someone who is entering in the industry as you're very young and you can grab a lot of opportunities in the market this is the ideal qualification that you need to get in order to shine in the industry now i'll say you why you need to study acca at myenrich.lk 
there's no doubt that myenrich.lk is recognized as the first ever best quality professional education institution in Sri Lanka for ACCA. myenrich.lk has educated more than thousands of students under ACCA and they have guaranteed for high quality teaching and has a pass rate of over 95% over the past few years. And I must say, from this institution, you get the opportunity of learning at your own convenience. How? They are offering you the chance to select your convenient place, your convenient time, and the number of times that you need to learn a particular subject in order to understand that particular subject matter well. So, this is really a flexible institution that offers ACCA, which is a huge opportunity for you as this offers the opportunity to learn at your own convenience and comfort of your own home. So, not only that, MyEnrich.LK is provides a number of scholarship opportunities. This time, for students who will be sitting for all-level examination, they are offering a number of scholarship opportunities, but a limited number of scholarship opportunities. So, don't wait, hurry up and grab this opportunity. So, how can you get this scholarship opportunity? For that, send a WhatsApp message as ACCA to the contact number 77 I repeat that again. In order to be receiving your scholarships, you need to send a WhatsApp message as ACCA to the contact number 77 And not only that, if you have any more further inquiries regarding myenrich.lk, ACCA or even the scholarships, please contact the numbers 77 5795 or 77-900-5749 where you will be able to get all the information that you require. So, I must say that myenrich.lk is a recommended institution to carry out your ACCA study. So, I invite you all to join with myenrich.lk to make your professional career successful. So, with that, I wish you all all the best for your professional career and also for your upcoming all-level examination. Good luck, guys. Okay, uh, guys, now uh, you watch uh, an informative video from uh, ACCA. Uh, and in fact, you have a golden opportunity to uh, start a globally recognized qualification that is ACCA after the O levels. Uh, so you can do A levels and ACCA parallelly and then get the professional qualification and then while you are studying for the academic qualification uh, you can pursue uh, a degree as well uh, in fact i am also a, a acca member so i have a lot of opportunities if i work locally or sri lanka i get a lot of opportunities but it is not a local uh, qualification it is a global qualification so wherever i go it is recognized so I can find uh, a job easily uh, in, in anywhere in the world. So I hope that you will uh, get this opportunity as well. So you get the scholarship as well. And uh, you know, spend another two to, two to three years for your studies. Uh, 
uh, and then based on the qualification and based on the uh, knowledge that you get, you can uh, do a good job. So uh, you know the value of education. So uh, try to get the education. Try to try try to get the knowledge uh, as much as possible. And this is in fact an investment in terms of uh, the accounting terminology, uh, not an expense. So if it is an expense, you know, after the period there is no benefit. But if it's an investment or if it is an asset, you have benefits in the future. So uh, the time that you spend, the money that you spend uh, will be an investment if it is on the education. Right. So uh, let's come back to the uh, paper that we have been discussing. Uh, we are uh, in the last couple of questions in the part one. Uh, and it is based on the financial statement. So I drew the format and I told you this is not the, uh, the complete format because uh, we want to mark the answers in the first part. Right. Where did I stop? So I uh, have the formats and let's uh, come to the question. Now uh, you have been given the three adjustments, in other words, three other information. Uh, so remember, Lamai, uh, you need to uh, do the adjustments or this additional information first, and then you go to the file balance given, right? So that is the order that you need to perform. First, of course, you need to have the format required and then start with the adjustments and then go for the trial balance. OK, so the first information is the inventory asset 31st December 2022 end of the year was 64,000. Right. Uh, so if I come to the formats, remember closing inventory should be adjusted in two two places, closing inventory or closing stocks should be adjusted in two places. What are the two places? First one is uh, under the cost of sales calculation, deduct the end of, sorry, deduct the ending stocks, that is 64,000, 64. Okay, I will write the short numbers, but you may write the full numbers, right? 64. And remember that should also be reflected under the current asset. Okay, under the current asset. So ending stock should also uh, appear here. 64. Then if you put these two, the first adjustment, first other information is done. Okay. Then you may uh, put a tick to the first adjustment and then go to the next one. Next one. Electricity payable as at 31st December 2022 was 3000. So it is an expense payable. As we explained earlier, expense payable is a, is a liability. Therefore, it should reflect on the current liability. Accrued electricity. Accrued electricity, 3000. And remember, we can see the electricity item in the trial balance that is the cash payment that is the cash payment right so if i go back to the trial balance we can see electricity 11000 so this is the cash payment and in the adjustment it says another 3000 to be paid payable so what is the total expense can anyone tell me the answer 11,000 has been paid, another 3,000 is payable. So what is the total expense? 14,000, excellent. Yes, 14,000, right? So I'm very happy about your responses. Uh, 11,000 paid, and remember this is the paid amount, payment, another 3,000 to be paid. So the total expense is 14,000. So remember, in the income statement or the statement of profit or loss, we have income and expenses, the relevant income and relevant expenses, right? 
Therefore, under expenses, we will write electricity in short form. 11,000 pay, another 3,000 payable, so total expense is 14,000. And remember, repeatedly, I'm telling the same thing, same fact. You are going to mark the MCQ questions. Therefore, you don't need the full format. You just get the answer by uh, writing short words and short numbers. Okay. Right. Second adjustment is also done. Last one, third one. Equipment is depreciated at 10% annually on a straight line basis. Now, if you look at the trial balance, we have been given equipment at cost. Uh, purchased on 1st January 2022 at the beginning of the year. 1st January 2022 is the beginning of the year. Uh, cost is 300,000. So under non-current asset, we can write equipment in short form 300,000. This is the cost. Purchase value cost. Right. So we have purchased the equipment at the beginning date, 1st January 2022. Now, they say that 10% is the depreciation rate for equipment uh, 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 on a straight line basis. So, calculate it. 300 into 10%. Right? Students, now if you take 10% of any number, 10% of any number, you can cut one zero. Okay, you can cut one zero. How? Zero to zero can be cut and zero to zero can be cut. Therefore, if you want to take 10% on any number, you can cut one zero. Right? Remember. Therefore, depreciation is 30. Depreciation is an expense. Therefore, under expenses, uh, depreciation 30. Depreciation 30. Okay. And on the other hand, it's an accumulated depreciation. Accumulated means collected, total, right? Therefore, under non-current asset, we uh, wrote the equipment at cost less or minus accumulated depreciation. Accumulated means collected, total, right? So at the beginning, we did, we did not have accumulated depreciation balance because this asset was purchased on the beginning day, right? Therefore, accumulated depreciation at the end of the year will be same as the expense. That is 30. 30. Okay? So, it should be deducted. Therefore, minus 30. Therefore, uh, the value of the equipment is 207. 207. And remember, if you have an accumulated depreciation balance at the beginning, that should also be added to the current year depreciation to get the accumulated depreciation balance at the end of the period. Okay? Right. So, we have done the three adjustments. Then, we we'll come to the trial balance and take the items one by one. Okay. The top of the items list we have the sales sales 280 write down sales 280 sales 280 and we have purchases 85 purchases 85 now it's all about filling the blanks that's why i asked you to have a format like this and then do the adjustments and then do the uh, other items in the trial balance an inventory asset first January 22, meaning the beginning inventory. So it's 24, beginning stock 24. Inventory stocks, those are used interchangeably. Stocks, inventory, those are the same words. An equipment purchase on first January 2022 has been taken here. So it is done 20% bank loan. Now that is a hidden adjustment. Now look at here. Now, these are the adjustments given. Okay, these are adjustments given. Right? But in the question, there may be hidden adjustments. Now, whenever you have a percentage like this, see, 20% bank loan, it implies that there is a hidden adjustment. It has been hidden. Right? So, the bank loan amount is 200,000. On that, we have to pay 20% interest. 20% interest. 
right so look at the amount 200000 bank loan amount into 20% interest we can cut one zero and one zero 20000 into 2 40000 interest expense the interest expense is this is expense 40000 the relevant amount and then you look at whether we have paid any amount of this out of this 40000 whether we have paid any amount or not if we have paid any amount that should be reflected in the debit side of the trial balance cash credit interest expense debit if you look at the list given it also says purchasing rent equipment bank loan salary cash debtors credit card rent electricity capital no so we haven't paid anything is it we haven't paid anything but remember you may have the interest payment right so anyway the expense is expense as i said you earlier expense is expense therefore 40000 should be reflected on the expenses in the income statement so on the expenses interest expense in interest expense i will write it shortly uh, in, in the short form 40 and we did not see any payment of interest during the period therefore total 40 is payable and remember this is an adjustment hidden adjustment right therefore the other impact is Uh, total for each payable, so that should come to the other liability, sorry, other current liabilities, uh, interest payable, interest payable or accrued interest, both are same, forty. Got it, forty. That's why I told you it is a hidden adjustment. Now remember, if you are given a percentage, then it implies there is a hidden adjustment. Right. What next? Salaries. Obviously, an expense write down. Ah, uh, I forgot to include the bank loan balance under non-current liabilities. Write down the bank loan value. Bank loan value that is two hundred thousand. Okay, so that forty is the interest. This is the bank loan value, right? And then salary is seventy. Uh, expense under expenses write down salaries. Seventy. Salary is seventy. And then cash fourteen thousand. It is a current asset. So under current asset, lastly we write cash fourteen. Sorry, fourteen. And then debtors again a current asset one hundred ninety six. Write down under current asset debtors one hundred ninety six. Creditors one hundred ten under current liabilities. Write down one hundred ten. Under creditors and rent, okay. Now tell me, you can see the rent in the credit side of the trial balance. If you see a balance of six, a balance of ten thousand for rent in the credit side, tell me whether it is a rent expense or rent income. Okay, I got the answer before I say the question. Then you can guess me. Right, because you spend like uh, uh, two and a half hours with me. Now you can predict me. Okay, wait. So it's an income because cash account debit, rent income credit. Okay, so rent income in this case and other income is another income. So under other income, write down rent income. Rent income ten. But if it is in the debit side, rent expense, right? And then electricity has been already taken with the adjustment and beginning capital. Capital asset was January twenty two is hundred thousand. So beginning capital is hundred thousand. That is very simple question. Okay. Now it's matter of taking the cost of sales, gross profit, net profit, and balance in it. So we'll do it quickly. uh so do it with me and check whether my answer is correct uh cost of sales 24 plus 85 minus 64 i'll use a calculator but you can't use as i know 45 cost of sales okay Cost of sales forty five. Is that correct? 
Are you following me? Following me? Yes. Are you following me? Yes. Great. So sales minus cost of sales minus cost of sales. Write down the bracket. So the gross profit is five uh, seven minus four three two. On that we have to add other income. So add another ten. Then it is two hundred forty five. And take the total of expenses and remember I took the total of expenses without classifying them as distribution expenses, administrative expenses and finance cost because here we are marking MC questions. But when it comes to the second part, we have to have the correct format. Right. So uh, here for, uh, for eight, 154, 154. Yes, then gross profit plus other income 245 minus expenses 5 minus 4, 1, uh, 5 minus, sorry, what am I doing? 14, no, 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 correct, 5 minus 4, 1, 4 minus 5, 14 minus 5, 91. 1 minus 1, 0. Is the profit 91 net profit? Can anyone come from 91? Is the profit 91? Don't don't write my answer and say yes, yes, sir, we got 91. You just cal you you calculate the profit on your own and then compare. Okay. Right, great. So net profit is transferred to the capital. I don't write the wordings, right? Because I am marking MCQ questions. So net profit is transferred to the capital. So add 91 here. And if it is a loss, should be subtracted. Okay, if it is a loss, should be subtracted. Now this is a profit. Now uh, total current asset, take the total 4, 10, 14, one is left, then 10, 16, 17, 274. Therefore, total asset uh, 4, 4, 544. And total equity 191. Total non current liabilities 200. Total current liabilities 3. Five one. So total equity and liabilities four four five exactly it balances. Now we can answer the question raised. I complete this. Now you can mark the answers. I take a couple of minutes and mark the answers. This is the same paper that we are uh, doing, uh, and uh, from question 34 to 40. So those questions are based on the uh, financial statements. So to answer for these 
questions uh, we prepared the financial statements income statement and statement of financial position so based on this answer we can uh, get the uh, answers to the question number 34 to 40 Uh, Luchit, uh, I think that you can download the paper from the link given in the chat box. Uh, if you go up in the chat box, you will find the link. To download the paper. Yes, I'll put it once again. Right. So let's mark the answers. Uh, 35. Cost of sales. Mark the answer. Uh, cost of sales is 45. Number one. Answer is number one. Then gross profit 235. Answer is number two. Net profit. 91,000 answers number four. Total expenses. Total expenses. Look at here. Total expenses, the summation of cost of sales and other expenses. Summation of cost of sales and other expenses. Cost of sales 45, other expenses 154, total is 9, 9, 1, 199, total expenses 199, answer is number 3, total current liabilities 153, Answer is number one. Fortieth one, total value of equity and non-current liabilities. Equity and non-current liabilities. Summation is 391. Therefore, the answer is number two. Answer is number two. Equity and not all liabilities, equity and non-current liabilities. 191 
Right, let me mark the answers uh, as I uh, remember. Cost of sales, 45,000, gross profit, uh, 235,000, net profit, 91,000, total expenses, 199,000, uh, total value of current liabilities, 153,000, total value of equity and non-current liabilities, uh, 391,000. Mark your answers. Right, so we have completed the first part and hope that you have the second part as well. Do you have the second part? Do you have the second part? This one? Did you receive this part? Right, great. We'll do a couple of questions of this part because uh, I don't think that we will be able to finish the paper, but uh, we will do a couple of questions. Thirty-eighth uh, question answer is total expenses uh, one hundred ninety-nine. One hundred ninety-nine because cost of sales plus other expenses. Don't take other expenses alone. Other expenses and cost of sales. Right, let's come to the uh, second part and you need to answer only two questions, remember. Uh, you will be, uh, you are given three questions, of that you have to answer only two questions. Right, only two questions. First one, uh, number five, because I have uh, skipped the uh, distance studies questions, so the starting number is number five. Define equity in a business, very simple. Now, when you see a question like this, you need to answer the question very quickly. Okay. And you know that a uh, couple of theoretical questions will come like this. Uh, so you have to uh, study the theoretical aspect as well. Because if you write the answer, it's not like doing calculations taking much of the time. If you write the answer quickly, you get the uh, full marks. So for example, define the equity. How do you define the equity? Equity is the residual interest of asset. Write down. Residual interest of asset. Equity is the residual interest of residual interest. Interest means the, the balancing part. Residual interest of the asset after deducting residual interest of residual interest of the asset after deducting all the liabilities after deducting all the liabilities after deducting all the liabilities got it right so you got uh, one mark next one b is take two elements uh, of financial statements now tell me what are the elements of financial statements what are the elements of financial statements 
give me at least few what are the elements of financial statements yes asset liability equity income and expenses correct asset liability equity income and expenses right okay there is a question if we write the value of assets belongs to owners of a business is that correct uh, it's all about the uh, dual impact say if the owner injects or introduces uh, cash or any other asset to the business on one hand the asset of the business increases on the other hand equity i mean the capital of the owner will increase therefore always there are two impacts dual impact for any transaction right hope that i have answered for the question raised by uh, indu induni uh, if we write the value of asset belongs to owners of a business is that correct uh, i don't get the question uh, clearly but hope that i am i answered but if you are not satisfied please let me know uh equity uh equity is asset minus liabilities right equity is asset minus liabilities but it is defined as the residual interest of asset the balance in part of asset okay residual interest of asset after deducting all the liabilities after deducting all the liabilities say asset is 100 liabilities is 20 equity is 80 residual interest of asset after deducting all the liabilities got it so the part b state two elements of financial statements you know that there are five elements of financial statements asset liability equity income and expenses of that presented in the statement of financial position and write down this summary write down this summary somewhere now elements of financial statements elements of financial statements assets liabilities equity income and expenses try to quickly 1 2 3 4 5 right of that asset liability equity go to the statement of financial position income and expenses go to the statement of profit or loss state man of profit or loss or we can say income statement income statement write down the summary right remember this summary okay a uh, question uh is raised to uh give the elements presented in the statement of financial position asset liability equity but we want to write two uh the elements that are recorded in the statement of financial position are asset liability equity okay we can write two of them right then we come to the second part write the journal entries for the following transactions now you earn two marks remember now it's all about the managing your risk uh, minimizing the risk risk of what 
risk of being fail at the examination okay but i know that you are a set of uh, clever students uh, i see because of the answers that you gave me gave to me right therefore you will not uh, fail but uh, you know there is a risk of being fail at the examination so first of all you have to minimize that risk how to minimize pass mark should be earned first okay pass mark should be earned first now you have to earn two marks likewise likewise one by one collect the marks and then come to the pass mark and then go for the b and a likewise okay always try to uh, minimize the risk first and then go for higher result higher grade right okay so uh, journal entries for the following transaction receipt of 18000 from radhika a date uh, so cash account debit 18000 radhika account credit 80 radhika account credit 80 very simple next one reimbursement of petty cash interest you know the meaning of reimbursement of petty cash interest uh, what is it the spent amount is given back by the main cashier to the petty cash the spent amount for petty cash transactions are uh, again taken from the main cash that is called as reimbursement of petty cash interest right so reimbursement of petty cash interest of 8500 by a check therefore petty cash account debit 8.5 bank account credit bank account credit i put that very simple because it is from a check petty cash account debit 8.4 8.5 bank account credit 8.5 got it next one following balances are given as at 1st january 2022 in a trading business equipment 150000 inventory 50000 cash 70 equity 190 creditors 80 the transactions occurred during uh, during january 20 22 we have been given six transactions and requirement to requirement uh, record the above transactions in the accounting equation use the format given below to answer the question and unfortunately in this is screen it is in black color you might not see but anyway don't worry i uh, will write the answer okay so use the format given right and the second question is how much are the total asset and liabilities as at 31 january 2022 very simple so if you record the transaction at last you get the balances and based on that you can answer the part b okay we'll uh, move to the uh, board and if i write the format given transaction number then you write don't write the full word in okay Full wordings are not required. Like transaction number, no, oh, just write number. And then we have equipment plus inventory, or we can say stock, then cash. Equal. We have equity. We have creditors. We have bank loan. We can write some uh, lines. Like have the format like this quickly. right hope you have written now first of all we have to write the beginning balances right 
So first one, first January balance brought forward equipment one hundred fifty thousand, uh, inventory fifty thousand. Write the full number. Cash seventy thousand, equity one hundred ninety thousand. Uh, creditors eighty thousand. No balance in the bank loan. Just look at whether the asset side is agreed to the equity and liability side. One hundred fifty, two hundred, two hundred seventy, one hundred ninety plus eighty. Yes, two hundred eighty. Sorry, two hundred seventy. Sometimes you will uh, require to find some balances like. Equity. If you want to find the equity balance, how asset minus liabilities, right? Asset minus liabilities equity. Got it? Okay. Uh, there is a question. Uh, is investment an asset or equity? Uh, investment is an asset. Investment means. If the business has surplus cash, extra cash, if the business has extra cash or surplus cash, they can invest in somewhere, like in a bank fixed deposit or any other investment. So, in the business's point of view, investment is an asset. Okay, investment is an asset. Uh, I think that you will uh, get confused. About the investment made by the business and owner's investment. Okay, investment made by the business is an asset, but owner's investment equity. Okay, hope that is clear. Uh, can we tell equity is value of asset that belongs to owners of the business? Mm, okay. Uh, Equity as the value of asset that belongs to the owners, okay, but uh, the correct definition was the definition that was given by me. But at the examination, you get the marks. Don't worry. Happy, happy face. Mm, okay, and the, another question, uh, Neluni, a beautiful name. Uh, before finishing the class, can you please give a summary about the counting errors? Okay, we'll try. The thing is, love uh, students uh, or uh, uh, Now actually, we have spent like uh, more than three hours. Uh, so within a short period of time, I might not be able to cover all the things. I'll try if time permits. Uh, we'll see. Okay, so let's write the transactions. Record the transaction number one. Purchase of inventory on cash basis was 60. Very simple. Number one, purchase of inventory. So inventory increases by 60. It is on cash basis, therefore, cash increases by 60. It's very simple. Number two, sold inventory costing 25,000 for 40,000. So cost of the inventory being sold should be subtracted or deducted from the inventory 25. It was sold for 40,000. Uh, uh, it does not say that it is on credit basis. In that case, we have to assume that it's on cash basis. Therefore, cash increased by 40. Cost is 25, selling value is 40. There is a profit of 15. Profit belongs to the owner. Therefore, equity increases by 15. Equity increases by 15. Okay. Number three, owner introduced an additional capital of 50,000. Now that is an investment made by the owner on the uh, investment made by the owner to the business. Okay. Not the investment made by the business. So uh, number three, uh, when the owner introduced additional capital of 50,000, cash increases by 50. That belongs to the owner, therefore, equity increases by 50. And then, fourth one settlement of a creditor's balance 60 under 2000 discount. Number four, now we settle the balance of six, 
balance of a creditor 50000 so creditors reduces by 60 creditors reduces by 60 if i am to state uh, let me know i think that this is not that hard so uh, let's try a bit uh, speed it up to cover more things during the show, uh, rest of the time so if i am uh, to speed please let me know so we settle the balance of creditor 60 but we pay only 58 because we get a discount so discount received is an income discount received is an income therefore equity increases and we need to pay only 58 therefore cash reduces by decreases by 58 now for you obtain the bank loan of 200000 very simple our cash increases by 200000 it is a bank loan a liability so there is a column called uh, column for bank loan so include 200 there okay number 6 for the last one now this is very uh, easy you can earn marks right now the mcqs you might take uh, some more time but for these questions very simple right so you can earn uh, how many marks uh, 12 marks easy right last one uh, sale of inventory costing 18000 with a profit of 12000 look at that with a profit of 12000 cost of the inventory being sold 18000 so inventory reduces by 18 profit is given as 12 so profit belongs to the owner therefore equity increases by 12 and what is the selling price tell me what is the selling price cost is 12 sorry cost is 18 the profit is 8 uh, 12 so what is the selling price 30 30 30 yes 30 because cost is 18 profit is 12 summation is the selling price yes excellent yes only yes your answer is correct happy yes so it's uh, on cash basis therefore cash increases by 30 and how much are the total asset so you need to calculate the total balances of asset and total liabilities total liabilities and equity asset equity is not that required take the values equipment 150 balance and take the values of others right uh please check my answers 50 minus 25 25 plus 60 85 85 minus 18 uh, 67 then cash 70 minus 60 10 10 plus 40 50 50 plus 50 100 Minus fifty eight forty two two hundred forty two two hundred seventy two. Equity actually it is not required, but uh, we will complete it. One ninety two hundred five two hundred fifty five two hundred fifty nine two hundred sixty nine. Let's check my answers. Creditors twenty, bank loan two hundred. Are my answers correct? Can anyone confirm?
are my answers correct? Okay. Then answer for the questions. Part B. How much are the total asset? Total asset is summation of equipment, inventory, and cash. In this case, in this case, summation of these three. So total asset. is 150 217 plus 1 plus 1 then total liability is creditors and bank loan 220 220 You need to write the answers, right? Don't mark like this. Write the answers very uh, in a very organized manner. Like right? part B, uh, total asset four hundred eighty-nine thousand. Total liabilities two hundred twenty thousand. And you start the uh, answer for new questions uh, with the new paper, right? Have you done the question? Can we proceed to the part four? Now see, see, this is a very simple one, so you can earn twelve marks, right? Twelve marks. Can we proceed? Okay, we'll come to the next part, fourth part. Uh, we are required to prepare the purchase journal. So, make a format of that purchase journal. Part four. A. Purchase the. So it has a uh, debt column. Then uh, uh, invoice number. Supplier amount ledger folio. Invoice number. Supplier uh, amount ledger folio or page number. Look at the question. The following now few transactions occurred in Erandar's bookshop during the month of May 2022. Uh, usually, uh, this part 
will be tested from the prime entry books like purchase journal, sales journal. Uh, so those two basically. Okay, so you can see the pattern. So uh, you study the pattern uh, uh, tested at the examination, right? Analyze few past papers, then you will realize the pattern, right? That is very important to uh, get the correct answer and to manage manage the time. Uh, last time, uh, as I remember, you were uh, given the sales journal. Am I correct? Last time paper. Last time paper sales journal. So this time it could be a purchase journal. Okay, likewise, there is a trend. There is a prediction. Okay, so uh, date 10th May 2022, invoice number 451, purchase books on credit basis, look at that, credit basis, subject to 10% trade discount from ABC company. The list price of this stock is 150,000. I write down the date, 10th May, invoice number 451, supplier is ABC company. ABC company. Now here uh, you you need to write the amount like this: the list price minus trade discount. Write down somewhere. This amount should be uh, written or found like this: list price minus trade discount. The list price of the inventory purchase is 150,000. List price is 150,000. Uh, trade discount is 10%. I told you at the uh, very first beginning to get the 10% of any amount, you can cut one zero. Therefore, 10% of 150 is 50. Then, uh, 150 minus 15, 135, isn't it? So that should come here, 135. Okay, after deducting the trade discount, you have to record the purchase value. This applies to sales as well. Remember, this applies to sales as well. That's why we told or we uh, said that uh, the trade discount are not accounted for. Only the cash discounts are accounted. Okay, right. And the next part. 12th of May 2022, payment voucher number. Now, now look at the question uh, here. See, when you see a difference like this, now this is invoice, this is invoice. Okay, this is invoice, this is invoice. But if you see a difference like payment voucher, so there is a suspicion. Uh, this is a suspicious transaction because payment voucher number is given. Payment payment voucher is used to record uh, the cash payments or payments made by checks, right? So if you read the uh, description further, purchase books on cash basis. Look at here, cash basis. Therefore, that should not be reflected or recorded in the purchase journal. Therefore, you are not supposed to record the second transaction in the purchase journal. But it has been given to mislead you. Don't get misled. Okay. But when you read, carefully read. When you see a, a difference uh, in the sequence or the pattern, there should be a uh, suspicious transaction. Right? Okay. So forget about it. And last one, only two transactions repeated. 21st of May, invoice number 201, purchase books on credit, yes, subject to 10 percent discount, this price is 108. So the next one is 21st of May, invoice number is 201, the company's name is XYZ Company. Uh, again, we can find the price, this price is 180, of that 10 percent discount should be deducted, that is 18. Therefore, 162. That's it. And take the total. It's 792. So, where do we transfer this 297? Transfer to the purchase account right now. 
transfer to the purchase account. Transfer to the purchase account. When? End of the month. Thirty first. That is the answer. Now the second part says us post the transactions. Post means record, right? Post means record. Remember, record transactions of purchase journal to the ledger accounts. So you need how many accounts? Tell me. How many accounts are required to uh, record the transaction from purchase journal to the ledger? How many accounts? Three accounts, yes. Purchase account, ABC company account, XYZ company account. So prepare three accounts. Very simple. So this is my purchase account. Uh, date, description, all your amount. Ledger for your amount. To decide date, description, ledger for your amount. Then we want uh, two creditors accounts, ABC company, ABC, again we need the same format. Date, description, ledger folio amount, date, description, ledger folio amount. Then uh, last account, XYZ. Date, description, with your folio amount. Date, description, with your folio amount. Right. So, uh, uh, the total of the budget journal, I have given the total 297. That should be debited to the purchase account. So, debit purchase account 297. We don't know the ledger for you, about it. 31st May, uh, we can say creditors. 
because there are two creditors. It's simple. And creditors are liabilities. Therefore, liability increases credit. We learned it uh, at the beginning. Therefore, ABC company uh, account credit date is 10th uh, May 135. Credit 10th May purchase 135. And then uh, XYZ, uh, its date is 21st of May. Description purchase amount is uh, 162. That's simple. And come to the uh, question number six. Purchase is a debit account because purchase is an expense account. The expense account has uh, a debit balance. What it? Yes. So we come to the uh, question number six. What is meant by the trial balance? Trial balance, a document uh, which is prepared end of the period showing all debit balances and all credit balances of ledger accounts. Write down. Trial balance is a document. Trial balance is a document. Trial balance is a document prepared at the end of a period trial balance is a document prepared at the end of the period trial balance is a document prepared at the end of the period showing or including 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 all the debit balances all the debit balances and credit balances, all the debit balances and credit balances of ledger accounts. All the debit balances and credit balances of ledger accounts. All the debit balances and credit, credit balances of ledger accounts at the, at the end of that period. At the end of that period all the debit balances and credit balances at the end of that period. Trial balance is a document uh, prepared at the end of the period, including all the debit balances and credit balances of ledger accounts at the end of that period. OK, so that is the answer. Then state the main two, uh, state the main two elements of prime cost. Very simple. There are three elements, of course, but we are required to uh, write only two elements. Write down direct material, direct labor, and direct numbers. Write the full words. Don't write D O D L D F D O. Write the full words. Direct material, direct labor, direct numbers. Direct material, direct labor, direct numbers. Right. Next one. Surangu started the business on 1st December 2022 to manufacture school bags and following information is given uh, for the month of December 2022. Now they have started the business on 1st December. Now if you are having a newly started business, it doesn't have a beginning balances. Okay, so that's why this information is important. First December 2022, it has been op uh, opened or started, so it doesn't have a beginning balances, right? Uh, we have been given fabrics used, machine operators salary for the month, other direct expenses of the month, factory monthly rent, 
uh, the depreciation of serving machines, business promotions, and etc. And uh, other information too. Uh, during December 2022, 120 bags were produced. That is the number of units produced. And the business maintains 40% profit markup on the cost of a bag. Uh, required manufacturing cost of a bag. Look at here, manufacturing cost of a bag. Manufacturing cost of a bag. And the other one is uh, in uh, black color, you might not see. Selling price of a bag. Selling price of a bag. Now, first of all, when you get a manufacturing account or whatever the financial statement uh, sum, look at the period. Now, here, the period is December month. Only one month. It could be a quarter, it could be a, a year, it could be a month. So, first look at the period. Now, here, the month. Right, so I'll go to the uh, board and do the question. Uh, so, we are not required to prepare the manufacturing cost statement. Instead, we want to calculate the manufacturing cost of a bag. But of course, to calculate it, we need a uh, uh, manufacturing cost statement. So, I'll uh, write it. Uh, Question number six, part two, A. Manufacturing cost statement. I will uh, write in short. We have a uh, Direct material that is fabrics used. Fabrics means clothing items, clothes actually. Then direct labor that is machine operators. Then direct other cost. Fabrics used 78,000. Machine operator's salary of the month. Look at the period carefully. Month. So, no problem. Other direct expenses of the month. Yes, 21,000. So, final cost is uh, 0009 uh, 13,159. If I am wrong, please let me know. Okay, 159,000. Yes, 89, uh, sorry, 81, 89. Yes. That is prime cost. And on that we have to add manufacturing overhead. Manufacturing overhead. So factory monthly rent is a manufacturing overhead. Factory rent. Of the month, 25,000. And depreciation of sewing machines. Sewing machines are used at the factory, so it is a manufacturing object. Machine depreciation. It's uh, 8,000. And if you look at the business promotion, now tell me, is it the manufacturing cost? Business promotion. Is business promotion manufacturing cost? Yes or no? No. So it's an uh, it's an advertising. Actually, it's a distribution expense, selling expense. Therefore, that doesn't come here. Got it? Distribution expense. Therefore, that doesn't come here. So don't take it. That's it. So you can take the manufacturing overhead. That is thirty-three thousand. So total manufacturing cost is, this is total manufacturing cost, right? Total manufacturing cost. Summation of these two figures, 0, 0, 0, 12, uh, 8, 9, 192,000. Is that correct? Can anyone confirm whether the answer is correct or wrong? Correct. But that is not the answer. 
okay look at the question carefully some students they don't read the question carefully they just uh, read the question and answer like this unfortunately they will lose some marks because this is not the answer answer is answer should be manufacturing cost of a bag so write down the answer uh, manufacturing cost of a bag how total manufacturing cost 192000 divided by number of units manufactured in this case 120 so you can get the manufacturing cost per unit or bag in this case manufacturing cost One hundred ninety-two thousand divided by one hundred twenty. Is it one thousand six hundred? One thousand six hundred. Yes. Then selling price. Part B selling price. Now you know the manufacturing cost is one thousand six hundred. They keep or they maintain forty percent profit on uh, the cost of the bag. So forty percent profit. Now this is cost, and if you add forty percent profit on the cost, it is equal to selling price. Selling price. So forty percent of one thousand six hundred. Get the value. One thousand six hundred equals to forty percent. Zero 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 zero. Ah, uh, here zero twenty four. Is it two thousand two hundred forty? Same price. Two thousand two hundred forty. Same price. Can we proceed? Okay, I'm going to do the uh, part three quickly because we have a uh, uh, limited time. Therefore, part three now one uh, student asked from me uh, just to summarize the error correction. So this question uh, relates to the error correction topic. I uh, will try to understand that topic. Uh, Trial balance prepared as at 31st December 2022 of Leslie's business did not agree, and the following errors were found for the difference. So we have been given four differences or four rather errors, and at last we are required to prepare the suspense account. And part B, if the total of the debit side of the trial balance before correcting above errors is 120,000, what is the total of the credit side of the trial balance before including the suspense account balance into the trial balance? Okay. Forget about the part B. Uh, just focus on the suspense account. So prepare suspense account part three. Suspense account. 
Now we don't know the suspense accounts beginning balance. Beginning in the sense, the suspense account balance before correcting the errors, we don't know. Therefore, in a case like that, please leave the first line. First line of first row should be left. As that uh, uh, similar to that uh, adjusted bank account that we prepared in a previous question. So we did not know the balance. Therefore, we left the uh, first line, first row. Right? So what I do is I will write the journal entries. Okay. I will write the journal entries. You know that error correction entries are written in the general journal. So if I write the general journal, general journal like this a summary format because we are uh, not required to prepare this therefore I don't write the full format number one error look at here uh, you might have practiced a different uh, method to correct the errors uh, but you know that uh, my practice uh, of course I don't teach uh, for all your students. Therefore, uh, your teacher or your uh, lecturer would have taught you a different method, uh, but try to adapt to uh, uh, that method by looking the answer uh, that will be discussed by me. First one, cash payment to a creditor amounting to 80,000 has been correctly recorded in the cash book, but recorded as 88,000 in the creditor's account. So what I do is, now the transaction is cash payment to a creditor. Now if it is a cash payment to a creditor, the double entry should be creditor's account debit, that is the debit entry, cash book credit, cash book credit. So usually I put two uh, dot lines to denote the double entry creditors account debit cash book credit now what has happened uh, it has been correctly recorded in the cash book so cash book has been credited by 80 that is correct you can write a tick okay that is correct but uh, it has been recorded as 88,000 in the creditors account so in the creditors account 88 that is wrong write down a uh, uh, wrong symbol incorrect symbol okay now if you compare these two you can see this is a shortcut method actually uh, creditors control sorry creditors accounts debit side is always stated by 8 because the original value is so the correct value is 80 but it has been recorded as 88 so its debit side is always stated by 8 to correct that creditors account credit 8 but the other account cash book is correct. Therefore, the uh, other entry goes to the suspense account. So, creditors account credit number one, creditors account credit number eight, and we can't do any entry to, to the cash book because that is correct. Therefore, suspense account credit. Suspense account credit. And I don't write the narrations because we are not required to prepare the general journal. Right. Instead, we want to prepare the suspense account only. Therefore, I don't uh, prepare the general journal uh, in its full uh, format. Therefore, I don't write the narration. Otherwise, you need to write the narration. Number two, uh, credit purchase of 15,000 has been recorded as 1,500 in the purchase journal. Now, if it is happened in the purchase journal, double entry would be recorded at 1,500. Right? So it is a credit purchase. Now when you do the credit purchase, purchase account debit, one dot, and creditors account credit, creditors account credit, other dot. What has happened? The amount is 15,000, but it has been recorded as 1,500 in the purchase journal. So if you record that in the purchase journal, purchase account debit 1,500, that is uh, incorrect. I write the full uh, full amount here, but here I wrote uh, 
thousands actually you need to have the consistent method you know that right and creditors account is also credited by 1500 so that, that is also incorrect it should be 15000 so another 13500 should be recorded in both places another 13500 13500 creditors account credit 13500 so it does not impact to the first tense account actually uh, you can skip it you can ignore it because we, we don't want to write the correction entry but just to summarize the lesson i will write the correction entries purchase account debit 13500 uh, here actually 8000 uh, 500 and creditors account credit 13,500. Three. I'll take another page. Three. Discount allowed of 1,500 has been correctly recorded in the discount allowed account, but recorded in the debit side of the creditors account. Look at it. If it is the discount allowed, the double entry is discount allowed the account debit one dot debtors account credit debtors account credit one dot. Okay, 1500 discount uh, uh, allowed has been correctly recorded in the discount allowed account here. 1500 correct, put a correct mark. But it has been uh, it has been uh, debited to the creditors account instead of recording in the uh, debtors account they have debited that into a creditors account 1500 that is incorrect okay incorrect now to correct this error don't do anything to the discount allowed account because that is correct right don't touch it debtors account should be credited by 1500 and this is not uh, relevant for the uh, creditors account therefore remove it creditors account credit by 1500 if i write the entries i will write it here because then uh, you will uh, see the entry clearly now debtors account credit 1500 Creditors account credit 1500 and we can't touch the discount allowed account because it is correct. Therefore, to tally this transaction debit and credit, the substance account debit double of this that is 3000. Got it? I don't know whether my method is uh, appealing to you, but you can have your own method to solve this answer. And last, the balance of the petty cash account. Now, petty cash is an asset account. Okay, petty cash is an asset account. So, asset account has a debit balance of three thousand. But it has not been taken to the trial balance. So it has been occurred in the trial balance. Now this is my trial balance. Debit and credit. And the trial balance is a document which is prepared end of the period. Trial balance is a document which is prepared end of the period including all debit and credit balances of accounts by the end of that period. Including all the debit and credit balances of uh, ledger accounts by the end of that period okay so uh, petty cash account should have a debit balance so petty cash account should have a debit balance and the corresponding entry uh, let's say cash should have the uh, credit balance okay because debit entry should have a corresponding credit entry isn't it so this has not been taken, so this is incorrect. But we have to assume that the cash entry is correct. 
therefore three thousand correct three thousand correct right now because of this error uh, you know that credit side of the balance three thousand but debit side is lack of three thousand that should should be transferred to a suspense account. Okay, so in the suspense account, now we have a balance of three thousand. Now by correcting these errors, we have to remove the balance available in the suspense account, right? So we have to remove this balance. So suspense account credit three thousand. Suspense account credit three thousand. Okay. You don't need to have a debit entry because there is no error in the ledger account. Sometimes you might try it like dotted uh, lines and then debit three thousand. What do you do? Do you write dotted line, uh, dotted line here, and debit three thousand, or don't you write anything? What do you do normally? Because there is no error in the ledger account. I think that you have studied these ty type of errors. What do we write? Dotted line, no. Dotted line, no. Nothing. Quickly. Leave, leave it empty. Yes, that is correct. Okay, that is correct. So this is the entry. Okay, there is no error in the account, but it has not been taken to the trial balance. That is the error. Therefore, don't touch on the account. Only the suspicious account. So now we can take the uh, suspense account, suspense accounts uh, balances. Here suspense account debit three thousand. Here credit three uh, thousand. Uh, suspense account debit eight thousand. This one we can say creditors number one and number two doesn't have the suspense account. Here suspense account debit eight thousand and number. Three suspense account debit three thousand. Number three, uh, debtors and creditors, debtors and creditors, and then uh, suspense account credit three thousand. That's thirteen year trial balance. Now we can find the suspense accounts available balance debit side eleven thousand. Minus three thousand, we can find the available balance. Balance that is eight thousand. That's why we uh, left the first line, first row in the suspense account to find the available balance because we were not given the available balance, so we uh, had to find it. Okay, last part, last part of the question and last part of the day. Because we are reaching to the end of the segment. If the total of the debit side of the trial balance before correcting above errors 120, look at here. Now, uh, if I erase this part, now if the Total of the debit side of the trial balance is one hundred twenty thousand. What is the total of the credit side of the trial balance before including the suspense account balance into the uh, suspense account balance into the trial balance? Now, suspense account has a credit balance, meaning that. Credit side is lower than the debit side. Again, suspense account has a credit balance, meaning that credit side is lower than the debit side. Look at here. See, suspense account has a uh, debit balance, debit balance, meaning that debit side is lower than the credit side. Likewise, here suspense. Suspense account has a credit balance of 8,000, meaning that credit side is lower than the debit side. So this should be lower than the debit side. That is then 120,000 minus 8,000, 120,000. 
the answer is 120,000. Okay, so uh, I think that uh, the remaining questions can be done uh, by yourself. Uh, part four uh, is a bank reconciliation, but in the first paper, I uh, just touch on the bank reconciliations format. And uh, number seven, uh, it has subscription account as well as uh, the financial statements. Actually, we completed one uh, financial statement set, uh, but we didn't follow the correct format because we wanted to answer the MCQ questions, but here you need to follow the correct format. Okay, so we spent like four hours uh, uh, to discuss these questions and remaining questions, uh, please do uh, the remaining questions because you will get uh, the practice of these uh, questions, then it will be important for the examination. Okay, so hope that you got something out of this seminar, you know that within uh, a short period of time I can't do a lot of things, but uh, I tried my level best to deliver something, do something is uh, valuable to you and uh, hope that you will uh, uh, face the examination very well and get a good result like 9 A's or 10 A's uh, even more than that. Uh, so wish you all the best for the uh, upcoming examination as well as after the examination think about the ACCA and such professional qualification. Don't uh, uh, don't uh, you know, uh, compromise your education because of any reason. So you need to study another uh, two to three years and it will be an investment, right? So in the long run, you, you will get the benefit of that. So uh, from my end, that's all. So let me wish you once again for the upcoming examination and have a good result and do the elements and do some professional courses and shape up your uh, career. Okay, wish you all the best and good night everyone. Bye. Thank you, sir.